We're here at Vancouver General Hospital where we're going to meet a very special team called the Canine Care Team. And here we have Traveler. So we started about seven years ago <laughs> with a program that we're looking to see if the dogs can detect environmental reservoirs of Clostridii difficile, C. diff, one of the superbugs. We saw a program in the Netherlands where a dog named Cliff was looking at patients on a unit to identify the patients that had C. diff on the unit. <laughs> Here we can uh, rapid check patients. We got the fast snap test, but there's no logistical feasible way to search the environment. So the dogs with their super sniffer capabilities fit that bill. <laughs> so for the dogs, it's a game of association. They learn that if they find what they really like, was a toy or food, they get really good at finding that and that's a game for them. Once they're good at that, we up the game a little bit and we associate it with whatever our target odor is going to be. For these dogs, it'll be C. diff. When they're good at that game, it's just the C. diff that's out there to find and the dogs learn, if I find this C. diff that they've hidden, I get what I really want, which is for Anton a tennis ball and for Traveler, turkey. Right now, we're the only hospital in North America running a program like this. We've covered 32 hospitals throughout Canada, but we're centered right in Vancouver. What are we looking at here? So this is one of our training hides. It's made by our medical microbiology team down in the lab. There's a, a polymer plastic tube inside. It's called a get sent tube. Mm -hmm. And it's specially created to collect VOCs, so volatile organic compounds. So the things that make things smell. Mm. So the little molecules of the C. diff odor get trapped in that tube. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to present the dog with the true odor of C. diff, but it's safe to train with so because it's not going to contain any of the spores on it. So really this is open doors. We're only limited by our imagination as to what now we can use the dogs to detect, especially in a hospital environment. So we're right now we're looking at what our options might be to further expand to another pathogen or to use them as a different type of tool, a quality assurance tool. Get it. Yeah. Get it. So when the dogs alert, we have a team that comes with us while we're doing a screening. And part of that team is our housekeeping staff, our environmental services staff. And they immediately take care of whatever the dogs alerted on with cleaning and disinfecting. Huh? Lots of people ask if our dogs just live at the hospital or what happens with them. Our dogs live with their partners, their people partners, or some of the dogs who are super busy and crazy, they also live in a, a kennel setting. You said, who has cookies? <laughs> who has cookies? <laughs> Oh. So we partnered during the COVID pandemic, we partnered with Health Canada to do just a proof of concept if we could train dogs to um, alert us to COVID positive patient samples. And then if we could transfer that knowledge the dogs had learned in the lab setting to a long-term residence oh facility. God. And we ran a six week pilot project with that. And the dogs, unfortunately we didn't have any COVID positive patients during that time at the residence but the dogs were able to transfer their skills, no problem. So really that's just given us a roadmap for what we can do next for a virus or another bacteria. Oh boy. And our new dog specialist, Darius Madabi, is with us. So most people don't jump at the chance to go to a hospital, but mm. you jumped at this because this is important to you. Yes, well, the, I mean, who doesn't love dogs, mm -hmm. first of all, so that was a big draw. Uh, but it was a, it's a really exciting program. I mean, dogs, we, they're, you know, people's best friend, mm -hmm. of course, but they also have a lot of promise for all sorts of healthcare applications. So they've been used to diagnose people with all sorts of different diseases, from cancer to Alzheimer's, uh, and there's a lot of promise there, but also just in terms of the environment. Like, it's not easy to walk around a hospital and swab every surface mm. to try and figure out if there's some sort of disease there. And so having a dog that can walk around themselves and just sniff it out is hugely important for uh, or, or at least hugely promising mm -hmm. for healthcare. And speaking of their sniffers which are so much better than ours <laughs> comparatively in the animal kingdom how do they choose the dogs how does it work like that? Oh well there's a any sort of working dog would be really good at this kind of work they just anybody that would be good at herding sheep would mm -hmm. also love to be you know put their mind to work and sort of scan a hospital uh, and so the dogs that the uh, this program uses are English uh, uh, 
English Springer Spaniels, mm -hmm. uh, and then they're training some Cocker Spaniels as well. And I think we have some photos of a few of those dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them that I got to meet, who was a recent graduate from the program, uh, <laughs> these are the puppies that are being trained. These are the Cocker Spaniels. Uh, one of them is named Kip Kip Kaboom, or Kip for short, and the yep. other is Secret Agent Disco, uh, or just Disco. Uh, Anton, I got to meet him, and Artie are uh, two of the most recent graduates from mm -hmm. last summer. Hugely uh, impressive, seeing Anton sniff out the, uh, the C. diff, which is... Again, a, a major superbug and cause of uh, major problems in hospitals. And you can see all of them together mm -hmm. being uh, not just adorable, but, you know, hard at work. So it's a very exciting program, and uh, hopefully we'll see it rolled out to more mm -hmm. places. Dogs with jobs. Darius Badavi, thanks very much. Thank you.